Hello, Adam. Hi, Giancarlo. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. I got to to Woodstock, and I'm looking around, and you're not here. <laughs> well, I was there, and now I'm gone, I, unfortunately. Yeah. I would have loved, loved to have stayed for a portion of the festival, but I'm on kind of a breakneck schedule, and it didn't allow me to stay more than the opening night and up stuck there. How do, how do, Are you enjoying yourself? Well, I just got, no, I just got here like an hour ago myself. Oh, and, you did? Okay, so you're just finding your sea legs. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I did get well, to see— It's a wonderful festival. Yeah, yeah, no, I've been up here a few times. I just, I got, I got, but I did watch, I did see Stuck, so don't worry about that, even though I didn't get here in time for opening night, but I, I did see it. Good. Yeah. Now, let, now, listen, I'm a born and raised in New York City, and um, I've, I, of course, had to ride the subways for years in, you know, but uh, it never occurred to me to break out, break out in song during a, you know, during any of my rides. Yeah. Although maybe maybe I should, I because I, it's there's certainly enough enough there. You know what I mean? Enough material. Well, if you know the New York City subway as as I do, I traveled it for many years as well, and um, there's a lot of music in the subway now, uh, all over the place in New York. They're normally at subway stops and not on the train, so not too far fetched that soon we'll have. Um, you know, music on the trains. I know when I rode the subway, there were a lot of folks. There was one guy. Yep, I know who um, I know who you're talking sang about. opera. Oh, 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 really? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, and he always, yeah, he had a little coffee cup, and he'd go through every car singing opera. So it's not unusual to experience that. No, no, that's true, but not necessarily. You don't necessarily get a shanti. You know, you, you get. Very, variations. You know, it's true, though, what you're saying, actually, not to get too far adrift or anything, but I was at Columbus Circle a couple of times recently, and they were incredible. You know you know how competitive it can be if you to get the right spot in the right, you know, station. And so the cops were being nice about it, but they were shutting down all these incredible musicians, and it was kind of un- unfortunate. Because, you know, I mean, there's so many people asking for money as it is, which actually segues to your to stuck in, uh, now that I think about it. Yeah, it sure does. Lloyd, uh, the character I play, who mm-hmm. you could acknowledge when you see the movie as the maestro, the person who is yep. telling you the story through their emotional life. Mm-hmm. And in a way, encouraging the other five people on the train who are also stuck uh, to open up mm-hmm. and share their story. So Lloyd is a, is a guy who lives on the train. And at one of these stops somewhere, you know, in between in the tunnel or in the station, but makes his living from performing, you know, verses of Shakespeare on the train or basically entertaining people, we think. And so we enter the movie with that construct that, well, there's something going on here. These people are stuck, but then they, they, they start to get a little tense with each other for a various amount of reasons, which is so totally natural. Some, some are late. Others are just, uh, you know, uncomfortable, and, you know, the lights go out. All these different things happen when you're in the tunnel. And it it makes for a really um, fertile uh, landscape for the story of of this particular musical movie. For sure. It's interesting, right? You made me, of course, the name of the movie is Stuck, and one could say, of course, it, re- it, it refers to the, the subway train that these six people are on that is in between stations for a period of time. But it's really actually stuck is really refers to is where these people are at this point in their lives. Correct. One could argue. That's exactly right. Um, it, it, it gets personal very quickly, uh, as things do when when normal people are in an emotional or a a threatening situation or one where they have no control. Mm -hmm. And so stuck is really Mm -hmm. refers to where all of each character is in their life. They're confronting something in their life that is, you know, is big and, and they haven't talked about it to anyone. And we, as as human beings, I think many people are empathetic to each other, but they've just turned that valve off. In our film, we have people start to talk a little bit and then, of course, start yeah. to sing because, in a way, you know, singing is a way of an emotional release as well. Oh, yeah. And it's gentler, kinder, and mm-hmm. can be much, have some musicality behind it. So I love our movie. I, I feel like it's a film that people 
can get some joy out of, even though what all of these characters are stuck over are deep issues, there's still an overwhelming ray of hope in our film, and it's fun. Yeah, it's complex, too, because human nature is we're in defense mode so much of the time, and it's, you know, it's a way of, of we think of protecting ourselves. So in this case, you know, these characters first spend the first section of their, let's say, or the second section of the time underground. They get, they, as they start to open up to each other, they, they become embattled. They uh, start attacking each other on superficial things like their skin color and the class and things of that nature. But very, once they get through that stage and they become more vulnerable with each other, you know, that's when when things really start to get interesting, you know. Um, but it's very typical the way of human nature that our first instinct sometimes is to rub against someone else as opposed to, you know, make ourselves open to them. I don't know. I just noticed that, too, in the film. Well, you know, the film also, you know, we as the human beings in the film are all ethnically balanced in a beautiful way as well. Men to women right. and yeah. ethnically balanced. So. When, you know, our character Ramon, Omar Chaparro, starts singing in Spanish, and it's, there's no subtitles, you, you, you have to enter his world. And so the cultural difference between the folks on the train, those gaps and those um, stereotypes are brought up in the film, uh, and which I think are so very important as well, because it, it reminds us that that person staring at us, once they do say two words, you know right away where they're from, mm -hmm. what nationality they are. Yeah. And so you can judge or tag them thus and have your belief system understand them, you think, because they said hola as mm -hmm. opposed to hello. Mm -hmm. So our film investigates all of that. You know, we see Asian people, we expect them to speak with a very thick Chinese or Asian or Japanese or accent and then we find out that they're korean and they're not chinese or japanese at all you know so we we in a way the movie allows us to in a very very interesting way disarm ourselves and think about oh how we may have reacted in a certain situation um in, when we see it and experience it in in that way stuck. well your character again lloyd yeah. uh, lloyd um says at one point when referring to the Lat Latino character, he he says to another person, he says, "You're just listening to the, the words. You're not getting beyond to the emotion of where he's coming from. You don't need to know, understand yeah, what he's stop saying. Stop listening with your ears. Stop listening with your ears. And stop listening with your ears. Use your heart. Is yeah, the implied you know? and uh, right? The, and using poor Omar in our movie, he gets called a taco. He gets called, you know." But he's also judgmental as well. Sure. Out, out of him being, you know, being judgmental, then he is judged too. Right. It's, it's you know, there's a fabulous thing happening for this film. And we had a standing ovation at Woodstock, and people really stayed around for the Q&A to hear about the inception of the film and how it came from a, a musical that was um, off-Broadway and how it was adapted. It really struck people, and... and you know, in, in our time and tide, you know, a movie about connecting, because I think the whole movie is about, you know, peeling the onion of connection. Mm -hmm. Even And sometimes we find when we do that, we can just say more to a stranger than we could to a friend. Because maybe they don't, uh, they're not holding us in personal judgment of who they knew us to be before we told them who we are. Yeah, and we don't have to... To me, okay. it's, it's fabulous. Mm hmm then there's songs and dancing throughout. We didn't really touch on that. Uh, you know, this is a rare case where the film works even with, without the songs, but it's only, of course, embellishes. It really is. Great point. It, it really does work without the songs. The songs are extension. To me, the music and the songs in this film are seamless. Mm -hmm. They really extend the emotion so that we don't run out of words and scream. And particularly for Lloyd, I mean, Lloyd's got a tune in the piece called Crazy. Yeah. Because, you know, he's, when we open the film, he's sitting there talking to someone who's not there. Um, and we, you know, we immediately, and then we find him to be very, you know, smart and erudite and, and pushing the envelope of trying to talk to someone because he has no one to talk to, to reciting Shakespeare for money and get shut down in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Um 
it's interesting, you know, that his his particular song is one that points the finger at everyone for for judging him, which allows the door to open. So for me, I'm I'm I come from the Broadway stage and singing and dancing, and I feel like the extension of song in this is to really give us the opportunity to fill in the world without dialogue. So much of our lives, we, we talk, we chat, we talk it out. It's written, it's intellectual. And music extends, it's an extension of, of, of the heart voice. And transcends. That voice is from the heart. Mm-hmm. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I was saying it also, music also transcends you know every it's sort of one it's the, it is it's corny to say but it is of course a universal language it does transcend all other nationalities and language barriers and and whatnot i mean it you know and it's cathartic the film does. exactly yeah, yeah. and i feel like our our music has the opportunity to touch people's hearts as well as their intellect as well as their brain so you mentioned we have a, a special way of doing that you you said so I know that I read from growing up in New York and you know being dragged to the public theater as a kid um at a certain point I went very willingly but you know, I I grew up going to theater in New York but you did do some musicals right cuz uh, what were some of the early work you did I was trying to uh, recall uh, I've done 13 Broadway musicals I started a musical called Maggie Flynn with Jack Cassidy and Shirley Jones oh wow uh, and then I did yeah I did a piece called The Mean Nobody Knows um, written by kids from then, we called it the ghetto or the project. They wrote the words and poetry, and then Luigi Piatore and a bunch of other New Yorkers, Jeff Britton, they adapted those poems into a musical. Oh. I went on to do Lost in the Stars, which is uh, with mm-hmm. Brock Peters, which is um, uh, a wonderful piece that uh, was written by a South African artist, which was also a musical. Mm-hmm. Um, Vina Galactica. Uh, seesaw with John Gavin and Ken Howard and Michelle okay. Lee. Okay, okay, um, you proved your point. You proved your point. I've done. I, I've had a whole <laughs> life on Broadway, which, yeah. which is what attracted me to the movie. Yeah, you know uh, the, the 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 willingness to want to tell a story through song is is a very different um, canvas, and uh, I'm so so proud of Michael Berry, the director, and, yeah. and um, our writer. You know Riley Thomas and and Tim Young for really at, at being an additional component to not only helping to finesse the songs but uh, and write the songs but um, but to be able to work with all the actors as, as diligently as he did to have it have it be so beautiful. Silly question, I don't know, but is it, do you have to be more even that much more vulnerable to to sing? I mean, again, you've done it so much. Maybe it's just in your DNA at this stage. But does it require a special level of vulnerability or or what? Uh, just to to perf- to sing in a movie. I'm thinking, especially in a movie, and to look at the camera and just just not to hold back at all. That is even more so than typical dramatic acting. Well, yeah, but you're not, you know, in a Broadway musical, you're on stage and you're going from A to B for two hours and yeah. singing and there's motivation. And when you're shooting a film, you're cutting the camera and you're doing another take of a certain section of the song. It's very, very different trying to find the energy level of the stage. Right. Keep it the same as you, as you enjoy doing it in the run-through. You have to stop for the camera angles. Um, and it's different because it's, 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 you have to trust had to trust the director a lot that he was going to capture it in a real fashion, not in a theatrical, musical fashion where here, my number, I'm going to do my number now, which is what it normally is on Broadway, to it's coming out of this emotion. Mm-hmm. It's coming out of this urgency of character. When it comes out of emotion and urgency of character, that changes the way it feels. And so you've got to own it and believe it. And sure, it was frightening. And you're sitting there with you know, an audience of all your peers. Um, you know, basically, they could be the audience at, at the Helen Hayes Theater. Mm-hmm. But it's a more personal venue. So you have to you know, put the energy in, but not make it um, in a way like you're trying to get hit the third row. But for me, I was blessed. I had a character who basically you'd assume is off, crazy, drug addict, or an alcoholic. So... I had a little license to work that fine line um, in adjusting the modulation of my performance mm-hmm. because of that. 
and it felt completely natural to take advantage of that playing Lloyd. Have you done any musicals on on camera before? This is the first one. This is yeah, the first so. movie musical. Yeah. Yes. Mm. It's the first one. You know, back in the day when we did Broadway, I'm sure that Maggie Flynn and Seesaw, they were all recorded. Um, oh, the sure. video was coming into play then, but certainly not not a movie. And I'm I'm really happy to have done this, especially now. And you know, we had La La Land, and this is the the, the heart. You know, La La Land is a big Hollywood film that you know is a musical that did so well last year. Uh, I think our film Stuck is is um, has some similarities in that it's a musical as well, but I think it's it's the heart felt. Mm-hmm. It's La La Land with heart. I mean, this movie really has heart. It, it does. really dies yeah. and it's not afraid to No, tackle. no, it, it's true. It wears, it wears its heart on its sleeve in a, sense, in a sense, which is nice, for refreshing. La La Land, you know, they say Ryan Gosling, you know, jokingly, they, they say he's saved jazz or he's, you know what I mean, he's brought jazz back. You know, I don't know if you heard that. Somebody silly said that. I've just, but I'm thinking maybe maybe uh, Giancarlo Esposito saved Shakespeare, brings Shakespeare back. Yeah, I, I hope so. <laughs> I really <laughs> I do. Um, do you have plans to do any more theater, or is, are you too busy with the the series? Uh, I do. I, I, I love the theater. Uh, you know, I'm 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 busy with film work, which is what I've been doing. Uh, Maze Runner comes out in January. I've been off the top of the beat with that. Mm-hmm. My film that I directed called The Show. The Show uh, just recently came out on demand. It opened about three weeks ago in L.A., New York, and uh, for a feature release. And now it's on on demand. It's called The Show. Stars Josh. Mel, Famka Jensen, and myself. I got a great cameo out of James Franco. It's a really, uh, it's an unfunctioning look at reality television. Oh, okay. I urge you, you to see that. It's a powerful statement on the way we live in our electronics and our society as we today. Well, um, I, I yeah. will. I absolutely will. And I'm glad you brought that to my... Please do. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, and everybody who's listening but, as well. Then, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, listen, it's been great talking to you. Same Do you have here. any other questions for me? Oh, um, no, that was kind of winding it down. And then I just assume, though, that you'll be on the next uh, season of, of Better Call Saul. And, you know, I'm just guessing, correct? Yes. You know, I I always like to keep the fans guessing, and so do they. Okay. We'll but, keep um, them guessing. It looks inevitable. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I want to thank you very much for, for doing this. I appreciate it very much. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for seeing the movie. Enjoy the festival. And uh, don't forget our film stuck. Oh, right. Stuck. You got it. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.